Surveys were sent to the home managers who were actually more often than not the owners of the actual business. And they asked a range of questions about the home and the manager's views. So obviously if you're the owner of the business and um, you see that you've received a questionnaire, the questions really will directly respond to you because it's your profits and your, your wage that's effectively going down. Um, so it's pretty representative. Um, Managers were asked for specific things, including job title, sex, age, length of service, possession, uh, position of a nursing qualification, weekly hours, and wages for all workers. Of the surveys, 20% reached a reasonable response rate. So they got 20% of the information back, or well, 20% of the surveys they sent out, they received back with actual responses. And the second sample was compared with the Labour Force survey data on care assistance, uh, which had a very close correspondence with their own findings. Um, the reason they'd done this was to make sure that the data they got from a sample survey was actually representative of the entire sector. Um, and so that's because, because they compared it with a previous survey and the results were pretty similar, they found that, yes, the data was representative, so they were able to go on and carry on the next stage of their, of their work. The paper actually focuses on the actual impact of the minimum wage. And what it found was that, well, what, is, what, it first, what the authors first started to discuss was the fact that in April 1999, the introduction of the minimum wage was at 360 an hour, which, which, which is not, not a lot. Uh, and that was for workers aged 22 and above. And there was a lower rate of three pound per hour for 18 to 21 year olds. And there was no minimum wage for the 16 to 17 year olds because they were still getting paid in Pokemon cards. Um, since then, the adult development rates have been uprated on an infrequent basis, so it's not actually just like yearly or monthly, however they decided to, it was just as in when they decided it was time. And the biggest increase, as I mentioned before, was the October 2001 increase, which was of 40 pence, uh, so which raised it to £4.10 on the adult rate, and 30 pence on the development rate, which raised it to £3.50. If you see here, um, that increase there, is the 2001 one, which, if you can see, the gradient is the sharpest there. That's the largest increase. Um, this was what they found. Um, if you see here, it shows that 32% of the workers here, should, can everyone see that? 32% yeah. of the workers there were, in, well, that's in all areas of the country, were paid below minimum wage. That was before introduction of the minimum wage. So you had 32% of workers in all over the country paid below minimum wage. After the minimum wage introduction, you can see that, well, it's really 1% that's paid less than the new minimum wage. If you look at the South Coast, you can see that 25.2% of the South Coast homes, workers, were paid below minimum wage, <coughs> and after it's only 0.7. So, what we found was that wages would increase by 3.9% on average across all homes and by 2.6% across the South Coast homes to raise workers to minimum wage. Now, what that is, is this figure here, this, this wage gap. Now, the wage gap is essentially how much it's going to cost a company, or well, in this case, the care homes, how much it's actually going to cost the care homes to increase the wages of the 32.3% that were paid below minimum wage to meet the minimum wage. So it increases their costs by 3.9% over the UK and just in the South Coast, 2.6%. So, I mean, as you can see, even though it doesn't sound like big numbers, it really is. I mean, if your costs suddenly, instantly just go up by 3%, 4%, then suddenly you're losing 3%, 4% of your profits. Um, basically, when we move on to the next point, it shows that after the introduction, the percentage paid exactly the national minimum wage was 27.7% across all homes, which is here. And 21.9% of workers were paid, which is here, are uh, the actual minimum wage just for the South Coast. So here we go, we can see that this is just another thing I found that basically just shows that it was, it was, it was an issue. People even people, newspapers, caricaturists were all talking about the minimum wage because it is such a substantial thing. I mean, the authors then made a model and to, to show the economic impact of this. The identification strategy was to see if there was any 
relationship between economic outcomes of interest. And by that, that just means outcomes that they were interested in. So in this case, it was wages, employment, and home closures. They wanted to see where the wages went up, they wanted to see where the employment went down, and they wanted to see where the homes closed because of this. Um, and what they did was the proportion of workers that were paid less than the minimum wage, they, like I mentioned before, put as a wage gap, and then they had the initial wages, and what they did was they just created a model. This was their model that they found. In this case, the OHT is the change in the outcome of interest. So in this case, wages or home closures or anything as such. And that there is the pre-minimum wage variable. X is the set of home characteristics. That was the model that the authors discussed. They didn't go through the model in very, very much detail because it was just the end results that they were interested in showing us in their journal. They used two measures of the minimum data, and both have been considered in Table 1. They used the proportion of workers paid less than a minimum wage and the initial wage gap. It wasn't clear which was the better measure, so they just used both. Because the minimum wage introduction was at a national level across the homes, the impact of the national minimum wage they found came from the variation in the initial level of wages. So what they stated was that it, depend, that it depended on the actual initial wage of the workers how much the national minimum wage affected them. Like I said in the beginning, if you were getting paid £50 an hour, then increasing the wage to £3 didn't really affect you because you were getting £50 anyway. So as a home, if you were paying everyone £50 an hour, when the national minimum wage came in, it wouldn't change your life at all. So... Yeah. Even okay, that's fine. The, the authors identified that the implicit uh, identification assumption was in the formula. This is the results of the home level wage effects. Now, if I just show you here. Yeah. The estimates of the empirical specification when the outcome of interest is wages are given behind me. The table reports that the wage equations that include the two pre-minimum wage variables on the right side of the equation that we previously showed you are, uh, are reported that in, part, in panel A here, that's using no controls, and the controls are county dummies, mean age, proportion that are female, and these here, and this is using controls. A control is, like I mentioned something earlier with, with my Chelsea example, is something that you may need to keep constant just to see whether that some, your specific variable is actually causing the changes. And as you can see here, that were the, these are the results obtained. It's actually clear what's actually happening. The minimum wage introduction increased both significantly uh, the home wage levels in, across the country. Uh, the minimum wage was, if this is true, irrespective of which measures you use. It doesn't matter whether you in include controls or not controls. It shows that the minimum wage increased the wages, which I feel was pretty obvious. Um, then we move on to the employment effects. The employment effects are presented in exactly the same way. Um, and here the findings are a little less robust. The minimum wage always attracts a negative sign. And this is true both of the introduction and the increase. Um, and whether or not the variables are controlled or not. However, the effects are not statistically significant always. You can see there in the 2001 they're not always significant. And the magnitude of the estimated employment effect does remain moderate, given how heavily the wage structure was influenced in the sector. Because if you see here, we can see that the employment growth was 1.3% lower for a 10% increase. So if we increased, um, well, no, if 10% if or more of the workers were below minimum wage, then employment growth decreases by 1.3%. Which, what, they, what, what, they, what the authors then found was that wasn't a lot considering how drastically, uh, the, more, how drastically their payments and costs had changed. Here we see home closure, which was the last of their, of their checks on what they wanted to do. Of the 548 homes with the good survey data, 126 closed between 1998 and 2001, which is, which is, which is massive. That's 23% of homes closed. But what they wanted to know was, are, are the homes that are closing the ones that were m the most susceptible to the national minimum wage, or did they close just 
for any other reason. Well, that's that. Um, what the authors found was that they didn't wish to, what the authors said was that they didn't wish to use anyone else's data when doing their work and their research because previous data without minimum wage wasn't suitable to show the economic effects of minimum wage flaws. A before and after methodology was used, which is why they studied around the periods of introduction and increase. They found that the wage impact was substantial. Around 30% of workers did receive the minimum wage after the introduction, and that created a substantial spike in the wage distribution at minimum wage, because if you were receiving less than minimum wage, now they're not, and they're receiving minimum wage, 30% benefited. Um, minimum wage introduction also, they found, reduced wage inequalities. They found some evidence of job losses, as we just saw, and, and what they saw was that they increased in, they were modest in magnitude, and they were often on the fringes of statistical significance, so they couldn't really state that minimum wage introduction really messed around with job losses too much. The author, lastly, recalled his study on whether the minimum wage affects home closure. And he stated that it's hard to find any significance or any evidence that shows that the homes, were more, the homes that were more likely to be affected by minimum wage were the ones that actually closed down in the two and a half years following the introduction. So, realistically, he's found that the wages, national minimum wage did change things, but it didn't actually cause a detrimental effect even on this low wage sector. <coughs>